Hey, good morning. It's Brett. It's 6.30 in the morning and it's uh, only 92 degrees. We had a hell of a storm roll through here last night, so uh, I'm not able to go out and go fly today, but I've been a little remiss and late in getting a video out to you. What I want to show you, I've been on the road for a fair bit, but I did a bit of uh, CAD work while I was gone, designed something up, and I finally got a uh, flyable prototype. It's still got miles to go, but uh, let me show you what we got. This is a little bush plane I wanted to build. It's a um, 2205, 2300 KV motor. I got a, a 30 amp ESC in there. Uh, it has something that's a little unusual for me. It's uh, actually got rudder. Um, the rudder is, um, I don't know, the shape and design inspired a little bit by old school manufacturers, guys like Belanca and Stinson. And, you know, I'd say it's really the de Havilland uh, kind of swoopy tail there. Um, there is a uh, tight interface fit between the uh, elevator control horn and the uh, rudder, but uh, it's sufficient and it works. Uh, I'll show you the servos, or you know, you can see them down in there. Um, plenty of room for batteries. We'll get into this. Bring the camera up. There we are. So that is my. Um, that's the 18650 pack. That's a 4S 3000. Um, there we go, I'll pull that out. And again, right now I'm not trying to build this airframe light, I'm just using inexpensive parts that I have in order to get the uh, first iteration of it flying. But it's within CG uh, with that uh, 4S 3000 pack. Similarly, if you use the, uh, the really light packs, it's easy to, uh, sorry about that. If you use the uh, really light, this is that uh, 850 that I fly around with. Um, you place this straight up in the nose, same thing, you'll be within center of gravity on it. Something I've been wanting to try and get around to for a while is building a uh, landing gear system, and uh, it's obviously a tail dragger. Um, let's uh, take a look at this here. Spin you around. There we are. The, uh, the gear on this was a, was a little tougher than I thought. Um, these are three inch pneumatic tire. Well, they're not pneumatic. I think they're foam filled uh, off Amazon. Um, you know, paid a couple of bucks for those. Uh, this is 3D printed. It's just same thing. It's my white PLA that I use for pretty much everything. Um, the axles in this interface is what I'm having a challenge with. If you can get in, you can see that's a, a bent piece of my survey stake wire. Same thing there. I have a couple of 3D printed. Uh, I'm using these as, as spacers, both on the inside and outside of the uh, of the wheel itself. And then this is my lock nut, which, if you can see, has a cutout where the uh, you bend that piece of wire through there. One issue that I know that I have is that the center diameter of the wheel, the uh, where the the axle is supposed to pass through. I believe that's a four millimeter. I don't know. I don't obviously have the wheel off right now to measure. This is too loose. Um, so I got to do something to tighten that up. Um, the other issue that I have is sometimes after a, a bit of a hard landing or any side load, this little hot, this is just hot glued. It's a piece of a popsicle stick that I cut off and stuck over that. Same thing. There's a little cutout for this piece of the bent piece of wire that forms the axle to go through. Um, and, and these have been coming off, um, although the, the gear itself has been holding up. Structurally, it's been fine. Printed right now at 50% infill. Um, earlier versions didn't go anywhere near as high on the fuselage. They only came to about the first set of uh, glue dots there. Uh, and in doing so, they had a tendency to rip right off. Um, this can be printed without support. Um, but I think it's kind of fun to learn to iterate a gear system. As you can see, it's super simple. It's the inverted KFM. Yep, there's people that don't like it. Cool, don't care. Um, the I did revisit my control horns a little. I'll show you. The uh, my original control horns look like this. Um, I've redrawn those, uh, and this was mainly because of the rudder, so that they have a bit of an extended tab um, that sticks out on the flight control surface. Uh, and you can see that both, you can see those here and then uh, back on the rudder, like I said, you can see it sticking through there. So 
The reason for that is just that, uh, you know, you're operating so close to the edge of the material, just any additional grip that you can get, you can put a little extra hot glue in there and uh, find yourself a little bit uh, better support. Single avionics rack inside there. I did actually, the very first version that I built with this, I built with a Speedy V F405 uh, mini uh, flight control board and, uh, and it, it flew fine. Uh, I gave it GPS and all that stuff but um, I wanted to build something lighter. I do have some new build techniques that I wanted to share, but I'll get into a build video. It's too humid right now to run the laser with the amount of rain that we had. Um, and the flying field is probably soaked in a hot, wet mess. So that's gonna have to be for another day. I do have some other video that I took of earlier versions of this airplane as I was sorting out CG and a handful of other things. Uh, and I'll share that with you. But um, that's basically it. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Oh, ignore my, a lot of glue there. Um, ignore my tail skid. The tail skid I do feel looks like it came off of a uh, Minecraft uh, Jenny. But um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a good flying, easy to build airplane. Um, builds quick, same thing. You know, you can throw the airframe together and in 30 minutes or less, there's absolutely nothing to it. And um, we'll see. I'm just having fun. I want something that you go out and, you know, with a small and light battery, uh, you know, fly in a cul-de-sac and uh, with uh, with a bigger battery or something like these uh, lithium ion packs that I use, uh, you'll have quite a bit of endurance. So I'll cut and show you some flying and uh, we'll go from there. My only other comments, you know, give YouTube the love. Shows 90% of you guys are not subscribed. Uh, I really would be uh, encouraged to see more subscribers, more of you guys click that button. So do me a favor and do that. I know folks have been asking about kits and everything else. Um, you know, I just got to get through the things I get through with work and uh, as temperature cools off and we come into the winter time and I have more time to work in the garage, maybe that's something we can look at in the future. But for the meanwhile, steal these ideas, build something your own. It's always cooler to bring something that you're the only one that has it and to be the dude that made it than it is to show up with something that came out of a box. Uh, anyway, we'll go to the flying field and uh, see how that goes. Alrighty, here we are on the field. Let's uh, flight control check, elevator, yeah. Aileron, rudder, flaps, flaps. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be using the flaps today. I think we need some more rigging. Let's uh, take it out, try the motor. All right, motor's good. Camera's up. Elevator is half a board width, nose high. Winds are basically calm. The Thrust angle looks about right. Let's give it a try. 70%. Oh, nice. I don't know why the camera cut out. Hopefully it comes back. A minute in. Rolls nice. Flying 50% throttle or less, basically. Seems to be doing well. I'm going to take it up a bit. Throttle back. First notch of flaps. Needs left aileron. Yeah, there's this definite stick input. Holding, uh, wants to roll to the right, so I gotta rig those flaps. But, uh, That's, first notch of flaps actually gives it quite a bit of margin. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to try a landing, hopefully. I'm 
Nice. I'm going to return the flaps up. Let's see if she taxis. Okay, tail's coming up. Um, yeah, this grass, it might be a little wet and a little big because it's over 50% of the gear. Um, first flight, uh, there was a glitch with the camera. I'm gonna check the camera and we'll go, uh, we'll try again. Okay, uh, not sure if the uh, first video took, the camera made some weird beeps, which sounded like it stopped recording. Flew it for uh, two minutes, 49 seconds at first. Uh, battery went to 71%, flying at about 50% throttle, took off at about 70% throttle. Tested first notch of flaps. They were very effective. Uh, there was a significant rolling moment as I went beyond that, so I'm not taking it beyond the first notch of flaps right now. Let's take it back out. Had a successful landing, uh, and let's go fly one more time. Here we go. Morning. Seventy percent. God, the most gentle. Yeah, thank you. Coming around. She's a good flying little airplane. You could dial down the roll. Rudder works. I gotta play with that more. Little wind picking up. Go back to that first notch of flaps. Definitely a pitching moment. That first notch of flap, she flies slow. Four minutes. I'll work my way down. Cleaned it up. Five minutes. That's where the flaps out. I'm going to bring it around. First notch of flaps again. Definitely a nose pitch up. Oh. <laughs> Either way. Looks like we survived. A little bit of a nose over. Hey, looks like we got a uh, working airplane. Got to dial things up. Um, figure out uh, the pitch coupling that still uh, was definitely going nose up. I can reduce the nose up input at flap addition. I got to work on the flap trim uh, with regards to uh, dropping a wing and a couple of the little tiny things, but I think we're pretty good. Probably get some epoxy and replace those popsicle sticks on the gear. Uh, hey, I appreciate your time. We'll get more flying videos uh, coming out and maybe work some more on this airplane and go from there. Thanks.